gaming videos. They're everywhere. 99.9% .9 of YouTubers want to be one, but only 0.0000001% make it. Will you be next in line to join the lucky few? Whoa, 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 slow down there, sport. Rome wasn't built in a day. We've got to train you up, give you the best chance of success there is, so that when you upload your gaming video, everyone will want to watch. So join me, Old Timer Finn, on the epic journey to making you a certified gaming YouTuber. Just bear with me one second while I drink some juice. Hold on. You got my juice, Finn? You got my juice? You just said no, I, I don't have any juice. You got my juice? I can literally see it in your pocket. Finn. Better just... Let's get on with the tutorial. When it comes to recording your gameplay, really, you're gonna have two options. You've got OBS Studio or Nvidia Shadowplay. Or if you're an absolute hero, then you'll still use Fraps. Or Bandicam with the watermark on you. Absolute legend. Do you all know like the basic mechanics behind being a hobo? Now me personally, I use Nvidia Shadowplay, and this is mainly because I have an Nvidia GPU. So if you have the same, I'd recommend using that. In which case, just keep it at the recommended settings and choose a place where you can get a lot of storage. And then make sure you remember that place because that's where you're gonna be dragging your files from. Well, duh. So we're gonna start off by opening Adobe Premiere Pro. And then name your clip something memorable. <laughs> then click create. And look at that, we've got a blank canvas to work on. So drag your files in. Word of advice, organize your shit better than me. Please, thank you. So double click on that file we just dragged in and then pull it over onto the timeline. Nice. Then we can begin cutting. Cutting clips is easy peasy. You just press C on the keyboard and then cut. Oh, oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, we're good. Okay, so you just press C on the keyboard and then chop it up. Make sure that you're just keeping in all of the interesting bits. That's about as much as you need to know at this stage. And would you look at that? We have a timeline that is all nicely chopped. Well done. <laughs> Woo. All right, uh, next, next one. So we're finding your clips. I mean, it sounds pretty simple, right? But it's not. It's like a stone carving. You just got to keep chiseling away until it's this perfect piece of art. So when you're thinking about going through your chop clips again, you gotta keep watching through it and seeing which bits of dead space that you can cut out. Now believe me, with gaming videos, this is so important. Unnecessary dead space can really kill the video's pacing. So really get in there, look at the audio waveform, look for those dead bits of space and bring them back, literally to the last bit of the voice that you can hear. It's really simple to do. Just drag the end of the clip in to that last bit of the waveform and then click where that empty space is like this and hit delete. This will ripple delete for you, bringing the whole timeline back. Another really important part of refining your project is getting rid of anything that just isn't funny. Now this is going to be something that's quite personal to your taste, but I usually just spend a lot of time going through it, deciding whether it's really funny on like the third time viewing it. And if it's not, then I just cut it out and see how it feels completely without it. And if it flows better, it stays out. So when that's done, you've got a really nice looking refined timeline. Well done. Big congrats to you again. Whoa. Um, next one. Next step. Doing the zooms and the tracking is my favorite part of the whole editing process. I love zooming and tracking. It's the part which lets you show what's important and what's not, what should be focused on and what should be left behind. And the best thing about it is that it's really easy to do. All you have to do is click on the video that you want to zoom in on and then go to effect controls and zoom in on that scale variable. If you click on the scale variable, then you'll see that you can drag the image around on the right hand side to make it go exactly where you want it to. So I do this on a lot of videos and I zoom in on things like text, things that are really important to the story of the video. People as well are a really good one to zoom in on, which then brings us on to tracking. When tracking, make sure that you're at the beginning of the clip and then hit the position keyframe to start keyframe. Go forward a few frames and then click the scale variable like we did before. A little blue thing will pop up and then you can drag it around and that will create a new keyframe. So go through the clip, dragging it around with the cursor like we did before and eventually you'll have a manually tracked clip. If you're wondering how I got these guides here to do the tracking with, you simply go to button editor, drag on the guides, hit okay, 
turn them on, go to view, and then add guide. On the horizontal orientation, you're gonna to want to do 540 pixels. This will give you one directly in the center. Add another guide, then change the orientation from horizontal to vertical. Whack in 960 pixels and you're done. And there we have it, a crosshair going right into the middle. This then leads to really accurate tracking without having to use After Effects. And of course, here's an extra clip of me tracking literal shit. Like actual poop. I just wanna poop, bro. I gotta poop so bad. <laughs> Oh, yo, you pooped! And if you want to know how to get motion blur doing zoom in and zoom out, all you have to do is slap on that transform effect. But lucky for you, I have a preset pack with all of my smoothest zooms in. Because I use this preset pack so much on every single step of the editing process, I'm just going to edit in this picture and this sound so that you know what we're talking about is already in there and ready to go in the preset pack. Maybe go get it. Music is really simple to do. It's an easy... What's going on here? I'm just trying to get a tutorial right now. You want me to carry on? You want me to carry on? I'm about to take over. 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 I'm about what are you doing? All of that's copyrighted. Go to Licked right now. Open up that browser. Now go to Licked.com, follow that link in the description. Go to that link in the description, Finn. When you go on their website, go press that button up there. Go press that button. Come on. They got loads of playlists with all this music. You know how hard it is finding music, Finn. It's so damn hard. Thank God they got all these playlists for you. How convenient is that? Oh, you, you want me to stop the song? You want me to stop the song? Okay, yeah, yeah, let's stop the song. How about we put on something like, oh, I don't know, Titanium? I don't know what you're thinking. Isn't that copyrighted? Surely a song with a billion plus streams is going to be copyrighted. If you buy it through Licked, hell no. Get out of here. Let's go, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Only certified bangers on this site. Uh, uh. If you use my link in the description, you get 50% off your first track. When you get that song, is Licked is going to provide you a download link. And then, and then you know, that's, that's it. It's, it's over to you. It's over to you. you. You know, pacing is important. Blah, 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 blah. You know what? Salesman well, Finn, you can teach this. Well, you, you, want me, you want me to teach just you teach now? it. Yeah, you can do it. You want, me to, you want me to teach this part of the editing tutorial? I'm just here to make a sale. Listen, you're me. You, you can, of course you know how to do it. I don't want to teach this. I'm not here to teach. It's not my job. You're going to be a great teacher. Yeah, okay. I can give it a go. I can give it a go. Um, so, you, you're going to want to drag that. You want to drag that into... On the top. You want to drag that there, underneath the gameplay, so that it's not on top of it, it's underneath it. You can't put it on top, I don't know why I'm saying that. You're going to want to click that, you click the audio, and then press G on the keyboard, and then take that down a couple of notches, make it like minus, minus 16. That's what I think uh, sounds best. As you can see, it's a little bit quieter now, and you can keep adjusting that, pressing G. Alright, screw this Finn, I'm out of here. I don't want to teach anymore, I'm done, this is boring, I'm done. I'm out of here, Finn. I'm going back to... Oh, ho, 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 subtitles. So, subtitles are the thing that pop my channel. I've been over how to do them twice now, once the standard way and the second way with the preset pack. So although you should go and watch those, I'm just gonna show you how to do a really quick version of subtitles here with that nice pop-in effect. But if you wanna know a more in-depth way of doing it, then go and watch one of these two tutorials. But anyways, let's go through it. So the first thing to do is press T on the keyboard and then click somewhere in the window. Type out something, anything, I, I don't really care. Go to effect controls and then open up that text box. First thing we're gonna do is change the font. I like using Montserrat on black. And then I centrally align the text. With the mouse, when you drag this text around, if you hold down control, it will start snapping. You want it to go into the middle of the screen and around here, I'd say. We're gonna add some stroke and then we're gonna make that black. Change the value to about 12, that looks good. And then we're gonna add shadow and then change that to black. These are the settings that I use on my text all the time. And now it's time for that pop-in animation. Make sure that you go to this transform layer below the text and then add three keyframes. One on the first frame, one on the fourth, and then one on the seventh. Now you're gonna go through those keyframes and change the values. The first keyframe is gonna be 75 or 80, the second keyframe is gonna be 120, and then the third keyframe is gonna be 115. That, in my experience, creates the best popping effect. Now all you have to do is double click on the text, change it to whatever the person is saying, and then alt and drag and repeat that last step on every bit of text. This is roughly what you're gonna get. First time I'm playing Ark, Survival of Old. I've heard it's awful, let's go. Transitions. 
Oh, transitions. Oh, transitions. If you want them to look good, you're gonna have to use presets. <laughs> Let's be honest, Premiere Pro does not have any good options, really, unless you want it to look bad. I'm gonna show you one of the Premiere Pro options that does actually look okay, but other than that, you should use my preset or someone who's got a similar working one, like Orange 83. Here's how to do that. Create a new adjustment layer, and then adjust the settings to be the same as your project, preferably 60 FPS. Drag the adjustment layer onto the timeline, and then drag the edges in so that it's roughly 12 frames long. Then alt and drag that same one over to the right, and again above to cover them both. Head into the presets folder, and then drag that main preset onto the bottom two adjustment layers we just made. When that's done, you can pick any of these transitions to go on top. Easy, simple, and nice. There are loads of options. We've got to zoom in, spin, bottom left, top right, Let's put this to one side for now and just have a look at the default Premiere transitions, something we will all have regardless of presets. Unfortunately, for those of you with zero presets, you have roughly one nice default transition to choose from, the Mobius zoom. Simply drag it in between your clips and bam, you got it. Let's see another one just in case it's any good. Nope, nope, it's not good. Whoa, 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 sanity check, how you doing? All right, good. So sound effects is a really weird one to teach because it's obviously really easy to just drag and drop a sound effect onto the timeline below the thing that is making the sound. But there is a bit of an art to it. One of the biggest mistakes I see is that people make sound effects way too loud. Grab my, uh, grab my hit, grab my glove. I've spoken about it a lot before. Just don't do it. Keep pressing G on the keyboard, just like with the music and drop it down until it's at a good level. Don't let this volume bar on the right go into red. Please. When you're searching through your library of sound effects, you're gonna be using the I and O keys a lot because that is gonna set the in point and the out point, the section that you wanna pull from the audio file and put onto the timeline. Now the priority for sound effects should be your transitions. Make sure that each transition has the appropriate sound, whether that's a whoosh, a glitch, anything. Please observe as I alt and drag the exact same transition sound under each one. In terms of audio effects, the only ones that I use are from my presets pack. I promise that's the last time now. <laughs> my recommendation for you on Premiere Pro is to use the parametric equalizer effect. Set it to vocal enhancer and you've got yourself a really nice voiceover effect. I mean, listen to the difference in this. Test, test, test. I wanna take a pic. Congratulations, you just made it to the final step of this whole video. I I don't even know what to say. Uh, it's, it's exporting, it's the easiest thing that you could do. So you go up, you click export, and then you change the name of your file to the video, whatever whatever you're making. And then uh, make sure it's H.264. Then I guess you, you export it on a high bit rate, you know? So it looks good. I usually do mine around 20. Uh, that's it. If you want a slightly more in-depth tutorial on exporting, then guess what? I've already made one. But go there with a pinch of salt because <laughs> it's, uh, it's basically a vlog. Yeah, bit rate. <laughs> so you did it. You've made your gaming video, you've edited it, you've exported it, and maybe you've already published it. I hope you've liked the video, and I hope you've learned something from it. Remember to try and enjoy the process as much as possible. Don't edit too much so that you're not enjoying it. Remember to touch grass every now and again. And also, if you can, take a step back to appreciate some things about the journey that you're on. People think that doing YouTube is all about the numbers, but depending on how you look at it, this career can connect you with some of the most amazing people who turn out to be genuinely beautiful friends. It can give you experiences that you'll never forget, and also bring in quite a lot of money if you get successful with it, which can be life-changing. A lot of people are scared to start a gaming channel on YouTube, and rightly so. There is just so much competition. But if there's one thing that you can take from this video, is that there's always room for one more. Now get the hell out of here.